And welcome back. It's Wednesday, the 13th. We're going to be talking about differential equations. Okay. I gave you worksheet 11.5. Let's take a look at it. Um, we're going to model word problems writing our own differential equations to solve. Take a look at number 8. I couldn't fit it on the front. It's on the back. Let's start with number 8. Okay, which is the traditional problem where Euler himself discovered the natural base of continuously compounded banking problem is the number named after him. It's E. Let's see why. Okay, here we go. Euler. E-U-L-E-R. That's why it's E, yeah. Alrighty, so uh, we're technically on page 547 of the Harvard Calculus fourth edition. Just to give credit where credit is due. And number eight says, money in a bank account grows continuously at an annual rate of R. For example, if it's 5% continuously compounded, R is 0.05 and so forth. Suppose your initial deposit in, in the year 2000 is 1000 um, bucks. Write a differential equation satisfied by M, the amount of money in the account at time T measured in years since 2000. Well, they really didn't give you enough verbiage there to write the equation. So hint and hint, it's the same model as number seven. Take a look at seven for a second. The rate of the growth of a tumor is proportional to the size of that tumor. That's the same thing with the bank account. The rate of growth of your money is directly proportional to how much money you have because the more money you have, the more interest you get. The more interest you get, the more money you get. It grows, you're gonna find, exponentially. So let's write that. The rate of growth of the amount of money in your account with respect to time is directly proportional to how much money you already have in there. Yes, I said it, in there. Alrighty. The MDT is KF. The M, money. You want DPDT equals KP for principal or something? Whatever. Alright, so how do you solve this differential equation? That's part A. Well, part A is writing it, part B is solving it, so. Good, tell me later. <laughs> All right, so separate, go. Separate the M's from the T's, those are the variables. What would you write? DM over M equals KDT. Can you integrate both sides now? Yeah, you can. So what do you get? Ln absolute M equals K T plus some constant, right, okay. All righty. I like to start with A because sometimes you get B, C, D, E, F, it's a mess. Okay, you'll see. All right, now I want to get rid of this Ln if I can, can I? I want to get M alone. M is a function of T, how do you do it? Raise both sides as powers of E. And you get M as a function of time equals, what should I write? Yeah, but remember that this is the same thing, isn't it? When you multiply two powers in the same base, you add the exponents. So this is just some other constant. I'm going to call it B. This makes life easy in the end. It's some constant. I don't care that it's of the form E to the A. I don't care. It's just some number. Okay, how do I get that? Now remember, they gave you initial conditions. They said, in the year 2000, you... You plunk down a thousand bucks. Let's say that that is t equals zero, the year 2000. So at when t equals zero, m is, was it 2000 or 1000? $1, $1,000. Okay. So what does that tell you? Where does that get you, b or k, if you plug it in? Yeah. Actually, b, because look, if you plug in a thousand, where does it go? Right, so the T is zero and the thousand is the M. So thousand equals B E to the zero, right? E to the zero is just one, so B is a thousand, right? So this is what's called the exponential growth model that we just solved. M equals the initial quantity times E to the KT. And in this case, K is the interest rate, R, that they were talking about, okay? So look, this is an exponential growth or decay model. What does that mean? If K is positive, you have exponential growth. If K is negative, you have exponential decay, right? If this is positive, it grows exponentially. If this is negative, it decays exponentially. 
already. Remember what exponential growth looks like. Okay, so that's my bank account. At t equals zero, I had a thousand bucks, right? I don't really care about negative time in this case. What if it was exponential decay? So it's like radioactive decay problems. This is a bank problem, this is a radioactive problem, right? They both come under this heading, under this differential model. If K is positive, it grows. If K is negative, it decays. That's all, okay? Now, part C, sketch the solution to find out how much money you have in the year 2030 and compare the interest rate of 5% to 10%. All right, that's time for Hal. All right, Hal, where are you? K is the compounded interest rate. So, that means, so, that, so like if R is 5%, this is 0.05. Okay. okay, so let's graph that. We're going to compare these two graphs with K is 0.05 and K is 0.1, 10%, and C and the year 230, how much money I have. Does it make a big difference? By the way, what's T in the year 2030? 30, because we made zero, T equals zero, the year 2000, right? Okay, so go to Hal, and let's ask Hal to graph this stuff. Alrighty, let's clear that out. It's going to be 1,000, the initial deposit. It's always, the B is usually the initial amount, uh, times E to the, and let's say 0.05T, well, I'm in function mode, so it's going to have to be X, okay? And I'm going to compare that to 1,000 times E to the 0.1X instead of T, same difference. And if I do a zoom for like we usually do, that's no good. Why? Because it starts at 1,000 and grows bigger than that. This is nowhere near 1,000, right? All right, so do I really need negative time? Do I really need negative money? So let's change this window. I'm going to make X min zero. That's your time. I'm going to make X max, well, what did you say 2030 was? 30. So I'll plug in 30. And that's a good X scale, I guess, for that. You might make it 10, I guess. I don't know. And then what about Y min? Do you want negative money? So y is the money, right? So zero. And how big do you think it gets? Guess. 5,000. 5,000? Starting at 1,000? Over 30 years? All right. Let's see if that's true. Graph it. Well, that's, that's at 5% starting at 1,000. And you're good. It's less than 5,000. But what about this one at 10%? Whoa. You're good for Y1, but Y2, how big do you think it gets? 10,000. How much? 20. 20,000. Okay, let's try 20,000. Uh, y max at 20,000. Graph it. Let's see if that's any good. All right, so this one starts at 1,000, goes to a little bit less than 5,000, wasn't it? Maybe 4,000 something. And then this one starts at 1,000, but grows faster. Exponential growth rate is greater. And, oh, God, is it going to go off the screen? Oh, I think you got it. We're damn close. Let's see. F5, value at 30 is. All right, the first investment gives you $4,481.69. The bank will round it off to the nearest cent, right? But what about that guy? $20,085.54. Which bank account do you want? The 10%, right. Okay. All right, so there's two answers here, right? At 5%, you got 4481. Let's say to the nearest dollar, 4482. And in 10% uh, to the nearest dollar, I guess, is 20086 Okay? So let's practice that up some more. Take a look at number 10 on the front of the page. All right, number 10 says, a cup of coffee is made with boiling water and stands in a room where the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. That's room temperature. That's about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, okay, if cap T of T, cap T is temperature, little t is time, is the temperature of the coffee time T, explain what this differential equation says. Okay, so here's a new model. This is number 10. They're saying D cap T, D little t, t is temperature in degrees Celsius, and little t is time in minutes, apparently, if you read the rest of the question, is proportional to T minus 20. Now, what the heck does that mean? Does that make sense? This is not exponential growth. That would just be KT. 
this is proportional not to k to t, but to t minus 20. The difference between the room temperature or the ambient temperature and the temperature of your object. Okay? This is called Newton's law of heating and cooling. Think about it. When is the growth rate zero? Does that ever happen? When the temperature is 20. So if your if your cup of coffee starts at room temperature, guess what? It's going to stay at room temperature. Okay. Let's graph that out a little bit. Take a look at this. Here's your cap T. Here's your little t axis, right? And here is a horizontal asymptote at cap T is 20. This is what I call an equilibrium solution. If I start at 20, I'm stuck at 20. But what if I start less than 20? Well, less than 20, like, I don't know, 5, minus...